My name is Jeff Tricky. I'm so happy to be here, have the opportunity. Uh, I retired teacher, still coaching high school football, Waukesha West High School, and we run quarterback receiver camps, um, 32 of them around the country, coast to coast, and uh, it's very exciting to be able to meet and work with your kids and a lot of kids from all over the country. Today I want to just touch base, and I know this is a limited time, and I hope you had a great day. What a nice program this is. Well, um, I want to touch on a, a quarterback play. I know in the youth programs, and I'm going to tell you right now, Wisconsin, your kids are exactly the same as the kids in San Diego, San Francisco, Scottsdale, Virginia Beach. Hey, we do as good or better job coaching, I believe, in our state than anywhere in the country. Attention to detail. And quarterback position in youth football, they still have the same concerns as they do out everywhere. Sometimes the kid that plays quarterback isn't always that guy that maybe turns out that should be or did it high school. And that's okay. Some are too heavy. Some of my best quarterbacks had to play guard in seventh and eighth grade because they're too heavy. But they're athletes. And you know what the situation is. But whoever you have a quarterback, the first thing I want to tell you is I want to thank you for making an impression on your kids. They don't get to me. They don't get to Pfeiffer at KM or any of your head coaches unless you guys do a great job. They never even come to the high school to go out for football unless they had a positive experience with you. So treat every young man like he's your own. Make him a better person because you're in his life. And that's critical. All right, how do we start quarterback? I think if I'm a youth coach in fifth grade or eighth grade or sixth grade, I would line them up the first day of practice. I'd say, first of all, who would like to try quarterback? Some kids don't even want any part of it. With a little encouragement, maybe you can. But you do need an athlete. I mean, let's not mince words here. You need a kid that's fairly athletic. Anytime he's a point guard, shortstop, so forth. Find out. Get 12 guys, 8 guys. Get all your receivers out there, too. And stand at about 7 or 8 yards and let them play catch. Take your youth footballs and let them play catch. And just stand as coaches and watch them. Watch a kid that has some kind of natural throwing motion and say, hey, John, why don't you try a couple repetitions here with Joe, Billy and Joe and so forth. See if he likes it. Don't pigeonhole a quarterback that doesn't want to play quarterback. All right, now we're going to teach him the basics. First, the stance and starts. In any program, that it triggers whether you're a shotgun team or an under team. I really encourage you to teach them under first. Make sure they have the foundation of the center exchange first. At some point in time, you're going to need it. If you're all shotgun, great. Then just move them back and get into that. As far as the stance, under. Parallel is great. I believe now, and I used to teach this, but about 15 years ago, things began to change a little bit offensively and attack-wise on defense. And I am now, we're having all our guys move their left foot if they're right-handed. Move it back to the instep of your right. It's not a stagger, not this. This is not good balance. But here I have six inches of depth and I get that left foot out of the way from this center that does that a lot. They just happen. It happens. So I've got a position here. Toes are straight. Not here. Not here. Toes. And I'm one of the teaching points you're going to give is power and in everything you do. I mean, uh, Hansi teaches it in D-line. We teach it in receivers, quarterbacks. Power angles is what we work squats for <laughs> to parallel all year is so that you create great athleticism in your hips. So you're going to be coaching and tell them to sit on a stool. Quarterback, you're going to get this guy, you're going to get this guy, you're going to get this guy, and so forth. And that's fine. He doesn't know any better yet. Tell him to get on a line. We do all our quarterback stuff on a line. 
I told them that. I would encourage you to take your three quarterbacks that you have in fifth grade or eighth grade or seventh and say, hey guys, you're accepting this risk of playing quarterback. So get here about 10 minutes early and get to your lines so that your teammates see. Well, in our group, I'll tell you, at West, I look over and there's this fifth grade quarterback and they're on a line and they're here doing their drill before the you know, the rest of the guys are running around tackling each other and punting and doing all that. These guys <laughs> spraying guys with water and I think hey, these guys are here. It kind of sends a message of what's going on here. Stance, great position. Your chest is out, your power angles, you're sitting on a stool. Create flat back, great power angle. My eyes are ornery. You're under center, your chest is back. Now you're ready to go to work. When they work under center alone without a snapper, put the ball in your non-passing hand. Don't do this. Said, go. Johnny a pet. Don't do this in a game. Said, hit! Now you're working on your drops. All three together. Pretty soon, that transfers to Saturday morning. And that's when it's fun. You see a guy with a little hitch, got a soft corner, and here's your quarterback. Said, hit! Yeah, that's what we practice. Cool. All right, stance, under. How do you take the exchange? If you're right-handed, we go here. This is the way we used to keep. We used to put our thumbs here. Leg to just, here's how some do it, and I think it's okay at the younger age. Some go like this. I've seen that. Here's what I really would like you to think about. As we go here, now I'm going to slide my lower thumb to a locking point. There's locking points in your pads of your thumb. Just try it once if you don't have anything in your hand. There's a natural locking point for the thumb pads that will create that pressure. And you tell them the pressure's always on the bottom hand. It's always on the bottom hand, not like that. Always on the bottom. All right, when you're in gun, here's our stance under. Chest out, ornery, power angles. Here's what we do in gun. I'm not gonna switch these. I'm athletic, I feel good, this is the way. I'm just going here. I want my thumbs together, and I want power angles. Not here, not here, right here. You've got great vision in shotgun, and I'm really balanced. Right in this position. If it's low, you're an infielder. If it's high, thumbs are together, you move your body. All right, I need somebody, is there a guy who feels comfortable tap, catching the ball? Perfect. Hi, Randy, how are you? Good. All right, in teaching the forward pass, the first thing you're going to do is, this is how most of your guys are going to come to you. They're going to have this grip of the football. They're athletes, they get in space, they can run like a deer, and they can throw, but this is all they've ever done. And when they were young, that's the only way that they could hold the ball in their hand was with their thumb there. And then they just rip it around, it looks good. Well, now we're going to make them a pass. So I want you to teach them, go right up from the first, first practice and say, here's the grip I want you guys to go. Index finger near the point. Index finger near the point. Middle finger below the white ring on the footprint. Two fingers over the laces. Two over the laces. One. This is a friction point that you use to create revolution in a pointed ball. You only have one over the laces. You got half of the friction. So we're going to give it that advantage. Here's the biggest change you make is the placement of the thumb. We want the thumb exactly the same as the middle finger on the football. Right below the middle finger. You check and make sure they have air in their palm and the support hand 
they're going to come like this. This is insecure. Ball security is game security, right? You want to be on the field, you can't be giving it away like this. Belly of the ball. Ball right here. Now, load position to teach a forward pass. I don't love the knee progression, but we do it. A lot of college teams do it a lot of times. It's just to teach your upper platform throwing motion and to warm up. We start here by getting this ball in a load position. Coaching point, you tell your guys, okay, get the load. Load means I am in position to begin the passing motion. Not here, not here, not here, not here. The point is at the shoulder, right around the shoulder. The ball is a slight tilt. It's not here, it's not here, and it's really not here. Right there. Elbows are relaxed, not like this. Here's how they're going to go. You start compressing, ball goes out. It's a two-part throw. It's up. You want to get right in here, coil. The first thing that has to happen to teach the motion, if you get it right on the line and say, okay, ready? Up. Shoulder must open. The shoulder has to open just like in baseball. How do we teach baseball? Throw right there. You're throwing at Shoulder opens. Left hand gets off and begins to generate the torque of a passing end. It's hips, upper body torque. It's not as much tricep and arm. Hips, legs. This comes over the top. As I release, we want it somewhere over your shoulder pad. You're going to get some guys here. You're going to get here, here, here. As a youth coach, I would say, unless they are at least here, this is fine. Don't change it. That's great, 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 great. Any lower, I would move them up. As I come over the top, I'm going to pull the last thing that touches, you tell them, is the inside of your index finger. Right here, that rotates thumb always down. Right shoulder replaces the left. Here we go. Coil up. Over the top, right shoulder replaces. I check your grip. Oh, Jeff, put your elbows relaxed. Got it. Here, one rotation. Ball cannot do that. You're going to get guys like our friendly rival down the road in Chicago, who still comes all the way to his wing. Coach, right? You guys all know. You see, you see him, and he comes here. And then he's got a gun, but he's late. And a lot of times, we're going the other way. You can't hitch. It's got to go up. So if I'm a hitch guy, come in here and just get on the knee. So Dennis is my coach, and he knows I've got a hitch. I'm a baseball player. Dennis is going to say, you can't hitch, so just go up, Jeff. So I'm going to go. All right. Now I feel it. Coach is right here now. He's not going to let me go down. I'm going to want to go down. Now, Dennis cares about making me better. This kid feels his coach helping him up. Now he knows when I do that, thank you. I don't want to do that. Wall has to go up. So you're going to start right here. Right knee, left knee. This is teaching him to throw on the run. This is a pre-practice pre progression or indie time. Then we're going to go knees. Coil. There's no difference.